right, so a lot of stuff to talk about today. Some interesting things happened last week, and we're going to go over it all. First off, as I'm sure most of you are aware, we got a brand new render of Waluigi. He's like licking a rose. It's kind of odd, though not the first time Waluigi has been associated with roses. This was in a video from Nintendo of America called Kit and Krista Unbox the Nintendo Switch Lite Blue Colored Variant. The video was about color comparisons of the blue Nintendo Switch Lite. I will say it does kind of have a bit of a indigo purplish look to that blue in certain lighting anyway, so I suppose the purple themed Waluigi kind of makes sense here. Still, it was very odd in general to get a new render of Waluigi at all, just for a random unboxing video. So most people are questioning what this new Waluigi render could actually be for. The first guess was of course some future Mario title that might involve Waluigi. And we do have an upcoming Mario game on the horizon featuring the Waman himself. Mario Golf Super Rush for Switch coming out June 25th has Waluigi in it. However, shortly after this Waluigi image randomly showed up in that unboxing video, we got Waluigi's Mario Golf render. And it's completely different from the render in that unboxing video. Actually, a lot of Waluigi stuff has been happening lately. He even got like a new controller recently. All right, so it's kind of back to the drawing board, guessing about what this image could actually be for. The really out there theory, of course, is that this could be his Super Smash Brothers render, and they accidentally leaked it early in that unboxing video. Wouldn't be the first time a Smash character's render had leaked early. Joker's render leaked, but Joker, of course, was already announced at that point, and Best Buy was the one who leaked the image, not Nintendo themselves. Not that Nintendo hasn't accidentally leaked Smash stuff early themselves before. We've talked a lot about the possibility of a bonus fighter and how Waluigi could fit the bill for that perfectly. Much like Piranha Plant, Waluigi is a Mario character and Mario is probably the easiest series to pull a character from to be a bonus fighter as they're fully Nintendo owned characters and wouldn't have to be like sold to us if the bonus was some kind of free extra character given out under certain conditions or something like that. A Mario character works well for that. And while Luigi might have a hard time bringing in stuff like a spirit board and new music and a stage if he was part of the fighter's pass. But if he was some sort of standalone bonus character like Piranha Plant, he wouldn't need that stuff. Although with all these new renders and images of Waluigi, maybe he could make a spirit board all about himself. Who knows? Anyway, while I think Waluigi has a decent shot of getting in Smash, especially as a potential bonus fighter if that happened, I'm doubtful that this render is a leaked Waluigi Smash render. I think the most likely scenario here is that it's simply a new render. Nintendo does do that sometimes for characters. They simply get a new updated image and it isn't necessarily for any particular upcoming game. Actually, Waluigi isn't even the first character to have this happen recently. Earlier last month, in April, Diddy Kong got a new updated render. That image showed up out of nowhere, similar to this Waluigi one. Some people were speculating maybe a new Diddy Kong racing game or something could be what that render was for. But now that we've seen Waluigi getting a new render as well, it's possible Nintendo simply has had some new updated artwork made for some of their characters. Maybe some new Mario game featuring both Waluigi and Diddy Kong is coming and these images will be used for whatever that hypothetical game could be. Possible, but either way, sadly, I do not think this is a leaked Waluigi Smash render. Waluigi getting upgraded to a playable fighter, of course, would be awesome. And this render, along with the Mario Golf render, does show Nintendo is at least paying attention to Waluigi lately. So maybe he will finally escape the assist trophy hell before all this Smash stuff is over. Speaking of leaked renders, we actually have another purple-themed character that got a new render leaked. The mobile game Crash on the Run was data mined and an image of a new character has been discovered. No, I'm not talking about the Noid this time, I'm talking about Spyro. This new artwork for Spyro, along with Dark Spyro, was found in the data for Crash on the Run. So most likely Spyro will be joining that game at some point. Crash and Spyro, of course, kind of go hand in hand, so a Spyro crossover with Crash on the Run feels like an obvious choice for a character to add to that game. There were some unfortunate rumors I talked about a little while back regarding Toys for Bob, the team that developed Crash 4. The rumors said there were heavy layoffs and the team was being relegated to working on the new Call of Duty game. This made a lot of people question the future of the Crash Bandicoot franchise, and whether or not Activision planned on supporting Crash going forward. Well, Activision actually said something about that rumor. 
Activision tells VGC that recent reports regarding layoffs at Toys for Bob are incorrect, and that the studio is fully operational. Toys for Bob will continue supporting Crash Bandicoot 4 while helping with Warzone. Warzone is the new Call of Duty game. So apparently Toys for Bob will continue to be the studio handling Crash, and Activision has no plans to drop the Crash Bandicoot franchise, despite the Toys for Bob team currently focusing on Call of Duty Warzone. That's good news to hear, especially for people hopeful that Crash Bandicoot could join Super Smash Bros. The series is still alive and well, according to Activision. Anyway, even more interesting for those of us hopeful that Crash Bandicoot could show up in Super Smash Bros., a new interview has come out with a creative developer from Toys for Bob, where they were asked directly whether or not Crash is coming to Super Smash Bros. If you recall last month, we had a ton of interviews with Yasuda from Team Ninja regarding Ryu Hayabusa from Ninja Gaiden and his chances at being one of our Smash DLC fighters. As always with these interviews, I suggest... If the question of whether or not a character is getting in Smash comes up, don't take the response too seriously. Whether the person knows or doesn't know about a character in Smash, they probably wouldn't be able to say anything about it anyway. These interviews could even have deliberate deflection or straight-up denial, like what we saw with Grant Kirkhope and Banjo. So you can never take an interview about a potential Smash character at face value. They are, of course, still fun to read about and see what kind of response these potentially in the know people give, but still they may have no idea, or even if they do know one way or the other if a character is getting in Smash, they might lie and throw people off the trail. Anyway, this new Crash interview comes from Nintendo Life, and it says, We had a chance to pose some questions to Lou Studert, a creative producer at Crash 4 developer Toys for Bob. He told us a little about the development approach, and of course we asked the inevitable question, Crash for Smash. And then I'll just skip right to the question. Now that we have a plethora of Crash games on Switch, do you think we'll ever see Crash join the Smash roster? We all dream of the day Mario, Sonic, and Crash can duke it out like the old days. We all dream of that day, don't we? If I had any influence, I sure would love to see that as well, but it's something out of my hands entirely. As with most interviews where Smash is brought up, we received sort of a non-answer here. Basically, it's out of his hands, and like most of us, he'd love to see it happen. Once again, these interviews always have to be taken with a grain of salt. If he did know Crash was in Smash, he of course couldn't say so, and would have to deflect, and it's also entirely possible only the higher-ups at Activision would be aware if Crash was coming to Smash, so he may not know at all, even if that is happening. Such sensitive, secretive information would likely be on a need-to-know basis, with as few people as possible being aware of Crash coming to Smash. So this interview I don't think tips the scale one way or the other, for or against Crash's chances of getting in Super Smash Bros. Another platforming mascot that's been requested for a long time is Rayman from Ubisoft. Ubisoft, of course, is a company that has a very strong relationship with Nintendo, and has content in Smash already, but no playable character. Rayman was a trophy back in Smash Wii U and 3DS, and in Ultimate, he's a spirit. Though, as we've seen with Min Min and Pyro and Mithra, spirit characters can be upgraded to playable fighters. And Ubisoft got some Mii costumes a little while back, in the form of Altair from Assassin's Creed and the Rabbids. Well, there is this new leak, or should I say, leaks, I've seen floating around that have a lot of people talking, and claim Rayman will be our next Smash Fighter. Basically, the reason people are talking about these leaks is because they are two different leaks that have the same exact name for an unannounced game on them. The supposed game that appears on both of these potential leaks is called Mario plus Rabbids Teensy Bit of Trouble. If you recall earlier this year, the Rabbids Twitter changed its name briefly to Mario Rabbids and themed itself accordingly before quickly removing the Mario stuff and going back to normal. Many people believed this was the Twitter account accidentally leaking that a sequel to the Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle game would be happening, but nothing has been announced yet. So let's take a look at these possible leaks. First I'll go over the shorter one, which only really mentions Ubisoft stuff. It says, Reminder that Rayman is Challenger Pack 10 and will be revealed at E3. Ubisoft will make a big Rayman push with merch, a major role in Mario plus Rabbids, Teensy Bit of Trouble, and a remake collection consisting of Rayman, Rayman 2, and Rayman 3. The collection is meant to gauge interest in a sequel. Okay, so let's look at the bigger leak now. This one is for, like, a ton of stuff at E3, and also claims Mario plus Rabbids, Teensy Bit of Trouble, is the title of a future game. So this leak, just like the last one, was posted over on 4chan, and it says, 
Some of this is also from the presentations too. Ubisoft Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, April 2022. Ubisoft slash Nintendo, Mario plus Rabbids, Teensy Bit of Trouble, November 24th, 2021. Ubisoft Just Dance, 2022, October 20th, 2021. Capcom Resident Evil Outrage, timed exclusive, December 2021. Capcom Marvel vs. Capcom Collection, July 16th, 2021. Capcom Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, June 14th, 2021. Square Enix, Near Automata, October 2021. Square Enix, Dragon Quest IX, Sentinels of the Starry Skies, 2022. Bandai Namco, Splatterhouse Encore, Holiday 2021. Bandai Namco, Klonoa of the Wind Encore, Holiday 2021. Bandai Namco, Tekken 7, November 26, 2021. Bandai Namco, Tales of Symphonia Chronicles, July 2021. Bandai Namco, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, November 30th, 2021. Bandai Namco, Pac-Man World Encore Collection, exclusive, no date. Bandai Namco, Sora LTD, Ubisoft, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighter Pack 10, announced fall 2021 so there you can see though it doesn't say it's rayman it does say ubisoft in there so it also again lines up with that other leak sega sonic colors remastered july 23rd 2021 sega sonic unleashed remastered july 23rd 2021 sega sonic chaos collection timed exclusive july 23rd 2021 sega merge games alex kid in miracle world dx june 24th 2021 Sega slash Lizard Cube, Streets of Rage 4, Mr. X Nightmare, No Date, Sega Night Streams Wheel exclusive, October 2021, Sega Super Monkey Ball 3, Banana Mania, Timed Exclusive 2021, Microsoft Game Studios Halo Master Chief Collection, Christmas 2021, Microsoft Game Studios Rare Replay, Christmas 2021, Microsoft Game Studios Battletoads, June 14th, 2021. Microsoft Game Studios, Conquers Other Bad Fur Day, No Date, Team Cherry, Hollow Knight, Silk Song, Sidebar Games, Sports Story 2022. Now that sounds like an absolutely crazy E3. Honestly, it's sort of too good to be true. But I'd be very happy to see this stuff actually happen. All right, so just because two separate leaks have the same name for some supposedly future hypothetical game does not mean either leak is true. It could easily be the same person posting both of these leaks and being consistent with their fake game titles. Or another person looking at a leak they read at some point and simply copycatting off of it some of the same information so that their leak seems more real because they both line up. However, we don't have anything on either of these coming true yet. Mario plus Rabbids getting something seemed likely ever since that Twitter account updated and then switched back to normal earlier this year, but we have nothing concrete from either of these leaks. And it is incredibly simple to make a fake leak and then make a second fake leak that lines up with what you wrote before and count that as credibility. Two fake leaks lining up really don't add anything to their believability. So I'm really only talking about this one because I've seen so many people mentioning it because the two leaks line up. Rayman in Smash would be awesome, but this wouldn't be the first time a Rayman leak was faked. And while I'd love for that E3 lineup to come true, I'm incredibly skeptical of this one. We'll just have to wait and see if Mario plus Rabbids Teensy Bit of Trouble turns out to be an actual title of a real game or not. All right, in other Smash news, we got two Smash events, one tournament with flags and bombers, and a spirit event featuring singing and dancing characters. If you were hopeful for a character whose themed spirit event might have been about singing or dancing, they might be out of the running now, or at least their themed event would have to be something different than like singing and dancing. I'm not even sure if like Hatsune Miku qualified as a character that originated from gaming, but Rhythm Heaven, of course, seems to have almost gotten a character in Smash Wii U and 3DS. So this might be a hit to our chances of finally seeing a Rhythm Heaven character come to fruition and show up in Smash. Last week, Nintendo randomly announced a new first party game titled Game Builder Garage, a game about building your own video game. I'm unsure about this one, seems like it could be really cool if people are able to get really creative here. But without knowing the limitations to designing your own video games, it's hard to say if this will be good or not. Certainly appears there's a lot that can be built using the tools this game offers from what they showed us. But without getting hands on with this game, it's difficult to know for sure how much creativity will actually be allowed for. The game does feature these cool characters, and I'm thinking it's probably a little too late for them to join Smash, though the Game Builder Garage does appear to be a sort of extension of the Labo games, just without the cardboard, and I know Labo Man was like a possible joke rep for Smash that had a decent following of fans who really wanted to see that a while back, so maybe these Game Builder Garage guys will get a following for Smash at some point. 
Now, the big news in gaming itself last week was the beginning of the court trial between Epic Games, the company behind Fortnite, and Apple. You may recall a while back, Epic Games took issue with the Apple iOS App Store, claiming unfair practices. Essentially, that Apple takes a cut of the profits for games purchased on their virtual storefront, the iOS App Store. Now, Epic had Fortnite on there and obviously must have agreed to these terms initially for hosting Fortnite on the App Store, but they decided it was unfair. They announced that they thought this was unfair with their 1980 Fortnite commercial, where Apple was shown as a big, evil, all-seeing corporation, and Fortnite was framed as the rebellious hero fighting against Apple. I'm going to try and leave my opinion out of all this, but the whole thing is pretty ridiculous. These are both big corporations. And especially that 1980 Fortnite commercial seemed absolutely absurd to me. Most people may have recognized it as like a Futurama reference, but it's actually a reference to an old Apple commercial, which is actually a reference to the book 1984. Anyway, making a funny Fortnite commercial for a lawsuit in hopes of... I guess getting Fortnite fans to support the cause of the court case? It just seems really absurd on so many levels to me. But whatever, the point is the court hearing between the two companies began last week. And beyond just exposing the ridiculousness of everything going on here, it also inadvertently exposed a lot of interesting stuff about the game industry itself. Basically, there has been a ton of leaks from this trial. Lots of stuff you wouldn't have expected to get brought up in this court case, did get brought up, and it's from all sorts of companies. A lot of private emails and like internal workings and just collaborations between companies got brought up in this trial, and it's all come out publicly. The trial is still ongoing, and so much stuff has been coming out of it, I just can't list it all here. But a few things of note include finding out such bizarre things as Nintendo has a policy that they won't work with any companies with ties to the Yakuza, the Japanese Mafia. Phil Spencer still hasn't given up on xCloud showing up on other consoles. Xbox has never apparently turned a profit from sales of the Xbox consoles. Walmart has a secret cloud gaming service codenamed Project Storm in the works. Paradox Interactive has some future collaboration with Epic Games. The Epic Games lawyer accidentally said that one. No one in the courtroom seemed sure if Stadio was still a thing or not, which might suggest maybe it's on its way out and eventually won't be a thing. And Sony has some really scummy cross-play policies, being the only company that seems to demand royalties for enabling cross-platform play between the different consoles. And that's just some of the stuff that's come out of all this. I doubt these companies are too happy about this court case as it's exposed so much, especially Sony, with that very controversial cross-play platform policy. But hey, on the positive side, Sony's working with Discord, so yeah, cool. Anyway, the most interesting thing for us Smash speculators is a big document of potential Fortnite crossover deals that was leaked to the public. I Fire Monkey over on Twitter, who deals with Fortnite leaks, went over all of this. The crossovers in this document range from stuff we've already seen, things that have actually been officially announced or released for Fortnite, to stuff that may or may not ever happen, to things that seem absolutely crazy and absurd and who knows if they'll ever happen. But hey, that's Fortnite. The crossovers get really wacky in Fortnite. Actually, I've considered doing a video on which is the better crossover, Fortnite or Super Smash Bros. Or maybe more specifically, what is the better gaming crossover? As Fortnite obviously does things outside of just gaming characters. But which one has the better gaming crossover characters? Fortnite has lately been giving Smash a bit of a run for its money, so I thought a video on just that might be interesting. After all, will we get Master Chief and complete the Microsoft Triforce of Awesomeness in Smash? Or is Master Chief stuck doing the Fortnite dance forever? Anyway, the most interesting of all these possible crossover deals is the one with Nintendo for Samus Aran. This is just some random fan art off the internet that was used in the document, I guess, but it seems Samus was considered for Fortnite as a crossover at one time. Now, we absolutely do not know if this deal fell through, or if Samus is still coming to Fortnite at some point, or if it just simply hasn't been announced yet publicly and it's still happening, or if it's not happening at all, maybe they just wanted to get Samus and it never went anywhere. The document doesn't say specifics. 
All we know for sure is Epic Games was considering Samus for Fortnite at one time. And it sure would have been cool to see Samus, Master Chief, and Kratos, all three of the big gaming console companies, with a character in Fortnite. Maybe Samus is still planned and will release closer to whenever, like, Metroid Prime 4 gets released or something. Maybe they're just holding off for something like that. Or maybe Samus was cancelled. Or if she wasn't cancelled before, maybe having this leak itself happen could end up cancelling the collaboration. We have heard Nintendo cancel plans with Netflix over leaks. So with Epic Games starting this whole court case that led to all this info coming out, maybe Nintendo will be a bit more cautious and hesitant to collab with Epic Games in the future. Who knows? Anyway, the big question for us, of course, is does a collaboration between Nintendo and Fortnite mean maybe Fortnite could be coming to Smash in some form? Could that have been discussed? If they were discussing Samus coming to Smash, whether or not Fortnite reached out to Nintendo and Nintendo said no, or if they actually got Nintendo saying, yeah, let's, let's do this, or if they sat down at all with Nintendo, maybe Smash came up. A while back, we had that Donald Mustard Zoom call with Jeff Keighley, where Mustard said they couldn't comment on Fortnite and Super Smash Bros. Whether that could point to a playable character like Jonesy coming to Smash, or something smaller like a Fortnite Spirit event in Smash, or me costume, or simply nothing at all, it's not known. But now that we've seen Samus in this document, it does seem Nintendo and Fortnite collabs could happen. Minecraft had some Mario skins in it before Steve got into Smash after all, so who knows if Fortnite will show up in Smash in any form, but having Samus in a leaked document regarding Fortnite at least shows that the Fortnite team is interested in Nintendo characters, so maybe something will happen with Smash. On the subject of Metroid, we've had rumors for a while about the Prime Trilogy being possibly ported to the Nintendo Switch. However, a former Retro Studios dev expressed how difficult porting those games would actually be. They said the biggest issue is that Retro Studios no longer has functional editor tools to work with the Prime codebase, so everything has to be brute force hard-coded. Rebuilding the hundreds of interactions set into Metroid Prime 3 alone, not to mention retuning the gameplay to take in the slower engagement pacing of conventional controls, would probably take a year with a 4-5 to five person team, full-time by itself. We of course do have Skyward Sword coming to Switch, and that had motion controls, and the Prime Trilogy rumors have been around for years already. So who knows what will become of those rumors of a potential Metroid Prime Trilogy port showing up on Switch. A couple other things before I wrap up this video. Konami apparently will not be attending E3 due to timing issues. Samus Hunter 2 claims Zelda news will happen this month, leading into more news at E3. Though we already know we're getting Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity stuff this month, so this really isn't anything new. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 are coming to Switch June 25th. I honestly was so happy with this remake, I might just have to double dip and buy it again for Switch just to have it portable. Speaking of old games I love, Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol are coming to the Nintendo Switch. Zombies Ate My Neighbors is one of my all-time favorite Super NES games, and having it on the go with apparently some minor updates such as achievements has me extremely excited. Zeke and Julie for Smash. And finally, First Four Figures has some new Mumbo Jumbo and Crocodile Banjo figures. So happy to see Banjo-Kazooie getting more merch these days. I think we have their inclusion in Smash to thank for all of this recent attention the series has been getting, and that is just awesome. All right, guys, that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. What do you think of that new Waluigi render? Do you think it could possibly be a leaked Smash render, or do you think more likely it's just a new Waluigi render? And if you have any thoughts or comments about any of the other stuff I talked about in this video, leave them below. Remember to like the video, leave a comment in the section below, and subscribe to Papa Gino's a Twitter. Patreon or Discord.